Greetings, Spitz Planetarium users. This is Dan Zielinski, and we're going to get right into it. And episode three is talking about the commands that control Starry Night in ATM. We're going to go one by one through them. Let's get started. The commands I'm referring to are the commands that come up when you double click on a Starry Night line. This box is full of commands. What do they all do? We're going to go one by one. We're going to start with tag. Now the tag command does absolutely nothing to Starry Night. It is simply a tag or a visual marker in order to mark certain spots in the show, maybe like a new chapter or, or a place that you want to go edit later. So in our example for today, I've actually placed five tags on top of each other later in the show because that's where I want to start our lesson, like that. After tag is scene. Now this is a very commonly used button because it executes favorites that you have saved into Starry Night. So you simply hit the scene button and look for where you put the scene, the scene folder. Once loaded, you set a transition time, whether you want it to be one second, which is default, or you can go two seconds to make it slower, or maybe even only one frame to make it instant. Here's a fade of our scene. Next is rate. Now rate allows us to choose the tempo in which we want certain movements to happen. For example, at this pull down menu you have five options. Annular moves the date forward. Daily moves the day forward. Heading will change which direction is in front. So you can change north to south, and south to north or such. Latitude of course moves from pole to pole on the earth. And longitude actually does the same thing as daily, so I never use longitude. But we're going to use annular for our example today, and I want to fast forward time, the date, to put the moon up front. So I'm going to set a rate and hit OK. Now, a couple seconds later, I want it to stop. I only need it to do this for a few seconds. So I'm going to put, insert a second rate command, but this time I'm going to put a zero as the rate, and that's what stops the time. Let's take a look. Following rate is toggle. Now toggle is used to just turn on or off anything that is simply on or off. There is going to be a lot of options underneath the menu. You can see that there's a lot of things. I and mean, you think of all the check, just plain box check marks there are in Starry Night. So there's a lot of things to just simply turn on or off. Now for this one, as you saw, as the moon was coming by, the sun was coming up. So I want to turn off daylight so that way it stays dark in our dome. It should look like this. Toggle daylight off. Our next command is dim. Dim is used when you can change something in increments of 100, so a percentage. A lot like faders. So if you want to bring something extremely bright, you turn it to 100 or down to 0. For our example, we're going to make the Milky Way 75% bright. That's a little brighter than it is right now to really make it pop out. Let's take a look. Our next button is list. Now list is like a fancy toggle. If you want to individually turn on a certain star or a planet, this is where you're going to look for it. For example, here's the, here's the list of constellations. So you can find your one that you want and then click on. Maybe you don't want constellations, maybe you want solar system trails. So you want to turn on the path of a certain object. So you find the planet and click orbital or local or whichever one you're looking for. You could also maybe just want to turn on a star. Now there are so many stars that there's actually in three categories, but you go to the correct category, look for your star, turn it on, turn it off, whatever you need. Or you could turn every star that starts through A through C on or off. Now, caution here, because there's so many, this usually slows down the system to turn on all the stars that start with A through C. So I would rarely use on all or all off. Now for ours, we're going to turn on the moon's label. So moon, label on, and there it is. Next is position. Now position is almost like a go-to for a date and time or even a certain place or angle or location that you need to do. I prefer not to use the position command because I use a scene instead. You got a lot more control with a scene with fade times and such. Positions are instant and instant only. But I'm going to use this command to move back one day. That should shift the moon like that. 
next command is play. Now play won't make sense unless we do slides first. Now we've covered slides pretty intensively through episode one and two. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I'm simply going to load a slide for an example. Uh, so we're gonna go into the folder and of course find the slide in the, in the image folder that I placed it. And we're gonna put that one up on the dome. Should look like this. And there she is. Now the other thing a slide command can do is to load a movie or an animation. So I'm going to go the same way, but except this time, click movie and set a slide. And we're going to use the bolide. It comes with all Spitz planetariums. Now once a movie is loaded, play will now make sense. So my next command is play. And in this, you can play, pause, or stop your animation. Pause keeps the animation on the dome, but pauses it. Stop clears your animation. You won't see it anymore. So it's a way to get rid of it or at least hide it. So here's a bolide being shot from Sagittarius's bowl, but then pause. Slide kill. This is the command used to just completely eliminate any slide that's on your dome. So here it is. I'm going to do all slides and do it in one second, and that should get rid of both the image slide that I used and the animation. Let's take a look. There they go. Fly is like a scene command and an OA command combined. What you can do is load any scene you have pre-saved into Starry Night. Now I've preset a Jupiter scene. Now instead of just crossfading like a scene would work, this is actually going to fly there from your current destination to your favorite. Now the downfall of this is that it's going to instantly turn all options and time and orientation to the destination scene. As you saw there, that was rough. It like instantly put the earth in the way. It looked kind of ugly. But the cool thing is, is after that initial effect, it's very smooth because everything's set to the destination. OX, don't use. Orientation animation is a great way to fly from one place to another in space. With the option here, you can see that you can change the rate of your elevation or your transition. Now, what the problem with these are is you don't set them with the scene. You actually have to have Starry Night in place of where you want it. The downfall of that is that it will not take any of the options from your scene you want to go to. So, for example, we went back to the Sagittarius scene here, and you'll notice I have the borders on. I OA'd at Saturn without those borders on. But you can see those borders aren't going to go anywhere because it keeps the options from the previous scene but goes to the destination of where Starry Night was. Let's zoom. Zooming is simply changing the field of view closer or further than the object. Now you have to make sure you're centered on the object you want zoomed in. You can set the field of view and you can set the speed in which you zoom. Now for what you're, what you're about to see is I actually loaded a Sagittarius scene again, but now I zoomed out to show the horizon. So there's the scene and now let's zoom out. FB stands for fade to black. This is like putting a big black screen in front of everything happening on your dome to cover it up. When you hit click on transparent, that actually clears that black and then you see whatever's behind the black. So what I've done here is the first one is to go to black, then I ran a fly command to Jupiter, and then I'm gonna go make it go transparent. So what you're gonna notice is that fading to black blocks everything that's gonna happen behind it. Now I'm flying to Jupiter, but remember a fly command usually have an egg ugly beginning because of the quick transition, but look at that. You fade back in, you don't even see that ugly part, and now you have a nice, smooth flight to Jupiter. Time flow is a wonderful command. This allows you to move the time forward, backwards, or stop in the current scene that's loaded. You can even change the rate in which the time is running. You can change it from seconds, or maybe to minutes, or maybe to hours, or even years, if you really want your scene to move. What you want to do is make sure that 
at new rate is always clicked and then you can put in whatever time you want. What you don't want to do is use at current rate. At current rate simply takes the rate that is currently set into the, the favorite. I hate doing this because it's harder to edit later. It's a lot easier to edit ATM than it is to go back and change your favorite. Real quick, the other thing that I, I recommend not using is stop at position. This doesn't seem to work right. It seems to always go past the position and then come back. So here's Jupiter, now with a beautiful time flow spin, and for bonus, you can zoom during a time flow. Looks good. T value stands for tag values, and there are not enough minutes in this episode for me to describe how much I love this one. When you open it, you have five sets of two lines. Top one's always legal tag, second one is value. These tags and values are referring to the programming that happens when you make a favorite. When you make a favorite, this file is created. Hundreds and hundreds of lines of code to say what, to, to tell the planetarium what to do. You can take any one of these lines and change it with this command. To keep it simple today, we're just going to change planet show label. So I have to enter it in perfectly. So I usually just copy and paste it right from the command, planet show label. And the value right now is no. Right now it's not showing us Jupiter or any of the other planets labels. I want that to be a yes. So I'm going to change no to yes with the value. This is now going to override the favorite and show my planet labels. Now that's a simple example. Here's an example of doing more than one. I could write this next command. I've changed the colors of the font. I've changed the size of the font. I even changed the font. You can go five times with this. I do suggest this be used by advanced users only, only if you're familiar with lines of code from Starry Night. INT stands for interval. This is used when one aspect can be set into a range but it does, it's not a percentage, it's not zero to 100. In this case, we only have one option, and that's point of interest. This goes from zero to 0 0.5. Point of interest, by the way, just means where on the dome Starry Night or Render Box will center the object, whether it's on the horizon or the zenith or halfway in between. There could be more options under this command later. But for example, here is point of interest at the horizon. Restore preferences. This command explains itself right on the command. It simply puts all your settings back to the last setting it was when it loaded, like focus of interest returning back to normal. Choice pick. This is used when you have one aspect that has more than one option to choose, but it's not a range either. It's more like a toggle, but for more than two options. 3D Distance Spheres, a new feature of Starry Night 645. This thing is awesome. This allows you to make a distance sphere off of certain objects. For example, let's do one off the Earth, where you can set the size, how far away you want from the object. You can show whether or not to actually put a section inside that uh, sphere. You can change the color of the sphere. You can change the opacity, whether you want to be able to see through it or how much you want to be able to see through it. You can change the grid pattern, uh, not only turn it on and off, but also change how fine you want the divisions to be. You can label it anything you'd like. I've labeled this one distance X. And you can get, make sure the font size is big enough as well. Altogether, it looks like this. And for example, I made a second one, distance Y. Now, when you want to go turn those off, you have to use the same command and just click the top where it turns all 3D spheres off. Like so. Quick spheres are when you want to access a distance sphere you've already made in Starry Night. So you simply find which object you want to make the distance sphere around, what category you put it in, and out of the category which distance sphere you actually want to use. Of course you make sure it turned it on and when you do so it turns on. For example, this is Max Satellites from Powers of 10. Our angle, don't use yet. Email or comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. See you next time.